What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, if you guys watched it all the way through, you guys would have seen this box at the very end. This was a teaser that I gave you guys, and uh, this is gonna be the topic of today's video. But without explaining anything, this just looks like three acrylic boxes with little holes at the bottom. This is actually gonna be a full-blown new filtration system for the Ranchu, the Aranda, and the Fantail. And um, this is gonna be really, really cool. So stay tuned for today's video. Remember those days, those L's, I could sleep right now. I get paid, fake games, stay in peace. I break in the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. You could be my peace sign. <laughs> So some of you guys might not understand what's going on right now, but once we get everything situated and set up, uh, everything will make sense then. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and set up the base. This is uh, the bottom of the filter. It has some Chinese writing and stuff right here. I don't know if you guys can see it in the light. And it is fully metal. This looks like the, the rain gutter type of shape that I use for my DIY lighting system from Home Depot. But instead, this is all metal. It has like white silicone in the seams and stuff. I don't know if you guys can see that. I want my face to be in focus, but it has a whole bunch of silicone, silicone it off. And I don't think it'll be leaking through any of this stuff right here. Even the bolts are uh, nicely silicone and stuff. Maybe not nicely, but they're silicone and sealed. So we're gonna test for leaks in the sink right here. Uh, the filter system is pretty sick because you can go like this and you can adjust for the width of your tank. And then for me, using it on my sink, I'm just gonna go like this. Pretty sturdy too. It's uh, everything's metal in this little base right here. It also came with these little boxes right here. It has a whole bunch of holes drilled. This is kind of like how I would do it with like the soldering iron and I would just poke holes. But this is a lot cleaner and these boxes look really nice. The nice part about this box is it has an overflow. So let's say for example, your media clogs here. It doesn't have a chance to overflow outside of the box. It'll overflow into this little channel right here and then it'll flow down. Let's see, so you're gonna focus. It'll flow down to the next box. So there's no way that this thing can overflow. I don't wanna say no way. Um, it's, very it's very unlikely that it'll overflow. There you go. And these boxes, uh, they do come from Asia and uh, they are kind of brittle and cheap and stuff. I would say it's a little cheap. It's not super cheap, it's a little cheap. Uh, boxes don't come perfect, as you guys can see. I don't know if you can, s I don't know if you, the camera can pick it up, but there's these little, um, there's these little hairline cracks. I don't know if you can, right there, see, there's a little hairline cracks on one of them, and I'm gonna use this at the bottom, like right here, so you, you can't really tell, honestly. But uh, yeah, just wanna point out some imperfections that I found in these boxes. So how you install them is just like that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset um, these little overflows. So instead of having them all on one side like this and having them all flow down to the, um, to the bottom of the sump straight through, I'm gonna kinda offset it so it'll flow and hit different media. So this one's here and then this one is here, if that makes sense. Go ahead and put it in the little filter system like this. And that's pretty much it. See, these lids are interchangeable, so they're not uh, designated for this one right here. You can make two boxes if you want. If that makes it a lot easier, you can have uh, two boxes instead of three boxes. And vice versa, you can have more than three. You can have like six or eight, but the higher you stack it, the more uh, wobbly it will get, and you don't want this to topple over. That would suck. This one's already set up, offset it, and it's gonna be like this. Here's the shower head of this filtration system. Uh, this is the part that goes on top here. It comes in different pieces. I went ahead and just put them all together. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you how, well, let's check it out. I'll show you. So it comes into pieces like this, and then they're kind of like Legos, you know? They're kind of like this, and all you do is put them on. It's kind of cheap. I mean, it's just cheap plastic and stuff. If this breaks, I can just go ahead and make a DIY PVC version, but I would rather not. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, this is gonna be the top portion. I'll go ahead and show you guys how I'd install that right now. So this right here, all put together, just goes right here. You want these circles to be in the middle so it gets evenly distributed throughout all the media. So another thing that it came with was this cheap plastic um, hose thing. It's kind of like my cheap water changing hose, as you can see, it's very similar. This is the, the cheap water changing hose I get from Daiso. It's a Japanese dollar store that's in my area. 
and the, the, the quality is very similar. I'm gonna be replacing this with some Home Depot hosing. So uh, yeah, don't expect this in the, in the final project. Go ahead and run this hose down. Make sure this is installed correctly. Uh, okay, got it. All right guys, so we have the hose on uh, this thing and uh, the, it's not super tight on here because it's, uh, it's just a zip tie, but let's see if it works. We're ready to go. Let me go ahead and plug this in real quick. Blast off. Oh, okay. It works. Look at this. Look at that, guys. Blow straight out right here. Oh. Ran out of water. Let's go and do it again. All right, so bucket's full. Let's do this. Plug it in. Oh, it's going. Oh yeah. I don't know about 400 gallons per hour, but it's showering correctly. I'm happy with this, man. This is it right here. Oh, running out of water. All right, so this pump works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and dry everything off, clean everything up and package it. And in the next scene, we're gonna go ahead and be at the house and we'll go ahead and set this up on top of the goldfish tank. All right, so we're back at the house. I went ahead and had to water change this tank right here. And then I had to water change this tank before we get everything started. And uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. I had to take out all this right here, the hang on back. And I went ahead and started this thing right here. I'll go ahead and explain what that is later, but now that everything's situated and everything is right, let's go ahead and get started on this new filtration system. All right, so first I went ahead and got the base leveled on the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the hose fitting for the water pump, so you guys can see. I'm using the bigger option. I went ahead and found a hose at the house, so I didn't have to go buy one, which is sweet. I'll show you guys where I place it later. I don't wanna move the camera around too much. I figured I had uh, an extra hose at home, but I couldn't find an extra hose clamp. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use a zip tie for now. And if it works, I might just leave it alone. Now that we got the pump and the hose situated, let's go ahead and get the boxes up here. So before starting this whole thing, I went ahead and got all of my filtration, put it in a little tub, and then put all my new filtration in that same tub. This way I can try and seed as much as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the media that I had in the hang on back. And hopefully the new sponge absorbed as much beneficial bacteria as they possibly could. So let's go ahead and get started with the new uh, media and let's go ahead and put it in these trays right here. All right, so the first media that's going in the tray is Biohome. This is a really popular media for uh, backy shower filters and stuff. People use them for koi ponds and shower filters and all that stuff. This is exactly what it is. So that's why I went ahead and got a mini version of it. And we're going to go ahead and put it into the filtration system. All right, so for the second container, we're going to go ahead and use Biomax. this tray, we're gonna go ahead and use the um, filtration media that Polyptor's boys gave us. Oh, yep, I think that's about it. And last but not least, in this tray is gonna be our mechanical filtration. Went ahead and zoomed in with the camera, as you can see. This is the Biohome, this is Biohome. This is the Eheim substrate uh, media. This is the Biomax. And then this is the mechanical filtration. So we have our layers stacked up and we're pretty much good to go. All right, so what I did is I went ahead and Teflon taped the thread so it's a little bit more security. And then I'm gonna go ahead and screw it into here so it's kind of in position. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just un undo this for now. Make sure this is real tight. Just like that. All right, so this is a little too high. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and modify it from the bottom. All right, so now that we have everything situated, 
let's go ahead and uh, get this thing plugged in. Just want to make sure everything is tight so water doesn't spew out. This is pretty tight here. I'm gonna add a zip tie here too. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Dude. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Ah, that is sick. Here, you wanna see, you wanna see it? Oh, you guys can't see it. Wow, that is really cool. All right, let me go ahead and clean all this stuff up and then I'll go ahead and give you guys a, a little recap of what this looks like. All done. All right, it's getting pretty late over here and then the tank is getting kind of cloudy just because uh, I've been stirring up the water and stuff and clearing things out. I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little bit and then we'll come back and I'll go ahead and give you guys an update then. But as you guys can see, it's looking pretty cool. Okay, so it's been a very long time since I added that trickle tower or the shower filter to my aquarium. And there's a lot of updates that I have to give you guys. So the filtration system is working really good. Uh, physically, I'm seeing the water to be a lot more clear and there's way more beneficial bacteria when it comes to the biomedia and all that stuff. Pretty much, I have a whole bunch of filtration now and it's all concentrated in one area instead of having a sponge filter here. K1 bottle here, hang on filter here. Everything is now in this um, shower filter looking thing. And the best part about this now is it's a lot easier for me to add filter floss to the top portion of this filter. And this way it'll capture a lot of detritus and all that stuff floating in the water column. I've had filter floss in a lot of my tanks and I especially like using it for the goldfish tank because they're super, super dirty. So now having the filter floss in there, the water looks really polished. It's looking really clear, looking good. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just way better than before. On top of that, like I said, it adds a lot of room for the fish to swim around in. Before, uh, the goldfish would have to like maneuver around sponge filters to find food, um, go ahead and like try and knock over certain things to get to certain areas they want to go. And uh, speaking of that, um, I have an update for you guys for the Black Ranchu. If you guys can notice in the image right here, you don't see the Black Ranchu swimming around. And that's because the Black Ranchu, once again, got stuck in an almost impossible way that it gets stuck. I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I wanted to give you guys an update on this guy. Here is the water pump that I had on the filter before I left. Uh, I went ahead and had all this um, Biomax media blocking the intake of the water pump. And the reason why I had this is because I knew that the Ranchu would try and get stuck somehow. And when it gets stuck, it's super, it's, it's super like helpless, you know, it just stays there. Like other normal fish would, it feel like it gets stuck, it'll flick off and never go back there again. But this guy right here, it when it gets stuck, it just stays there. All right, so now that we had the biomedia that was right there, I noticed one day that the goldfish pushed it out of the way and uh, left that area open. So in this picture, what, you see that sponge right there? went ahead and slipped the sponge right in between the glass and the filter to make sure nothing happens. Let me show you something. Getting real frustrated here. All right, so this is the same water pump that's in that tank, the literal same water pump. I have an extra at this house just in case it goes out. But as you can see, the intake of the filter is right here. Let me go ahead and open this up real quick. The intake of the filter is right here. See the side right here, the top, all that, right? And based off of this picture here, as you can see, I have a sponge right there. See how it looks like it's blocking off everything? It's literally like right here, like this. And the thing is the sponge even curves around the pump too. It even goes like, like this, you know what I mean? The ranch shoes somehow gets stuck like I found the ranch who's stuck like right there on the side. So if the water pump's like this, it was literally stuck on the edge with the sponge there. It gets stuck there and then it doesn't move. I don't know what's going on. Um, it wasn't a lot of pressure too because I know that 
if, if, th if this side gets blocked, most of the flow will come from this side, the bottom or the other side, or even through the actual sponge itself. I have no idea how this fish survives this long. <laughs> but this ranchu has had a big history of getting stuck behind things. So the first day I brought this ranchu home, it got stuck behind a sponge filter that was the ones that you know you, you stick to the wall. Where the hell is the ranchu? What the hell? He's behind my sponge filter. Do you guys see that? He's stuck in there. Stupid. Get the hell out of here. How did he get stuck? Wow, I was like, where did he go? Hopefully he didn't hurt himself. I mean, good thing it's just a splash filter. Jeez, I got kind of scared there for a minute. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he don't do that again. I don't know how that happened. Good thing I saw him. Or else he would have been stuck there all night. It was stuck behind there. That strike one away the hand took that sponge filter out and ended up healing. The next time it gets stuck is in between the K1 bottle and the wall. Went ahead, moved the K1 bottle, it recovered, it's all good. The third time it gets stuck, it I found it I found it like upside down behind that corner sponge filter that I have. It's just, just laying there. Just stuck. Laying there. Okay, after that I went ahead and moved the bottle out a little bit, accommodate for it. And then the next time I found it stuck, it's underneath that sponge filter. So it, it's 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 in there, right? And this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a lot of these things out of the tank. So this rancher doesn't get stuck under him. The black rancher even got stuck behind the, the, the heater. This is the reason why I don't have the heater mounted to the wall. So fast forward, taking everything out of the tank, leaving everything wide open for this guy. Um, he finds a way to get stuck behind the most simplest thing. So... Uh, I tried to do it. I tried to help him by moving all these things out of the tank, but um, yeah, it ultimately got stuck behind the last thing that's in the aquarium. The absolute last thing that's in the aquarium that it can get stuck behind, it got stuck behind. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Black Ranchu. He ended up passing away, and um, I test the water. Everything is good. The other two goldfish are doing perfectly fine, and uh, they're not showing signs of stress at all. There's no bacterial bloom. Um, yeah, I just I just don't know. This black ranchu is just it was just trouble from the first day that I got him. Anyways, that's the end for the black ranchu. I was pretty hurt for it because I mean it was an expensive fish, and um, yeah, I tried my best to accommodate for it, but ultimately that fish was just I don't know what was up with that fish, man. It just it was just so helpless, you know. But anyways, back to the filtration itself. It's it's really good. It clears up a whole bunch of stuff that's in the tank that's super distracting. Now the only thing that's in the aquarium is the heater and this water pump right here. Yeah, now I have a whole bunch of room for these guys to swim around in and cause havoc. Um, but the only sad part is the ranch is not here, which absolutely sucks. I do suggest you guys try this filtration system out. Uh, depending on the type of pump that you get. Uh, I chose a weak one because I didn't want to consume too much power in that location. I have a lot of stuff plugged in and I want to use as little watts as possible. This is the reason why I chose a 15 watt pump. It's super weak. It's super weak and it consumes a, a, not a lot of power. So this is the perfect pump for me. But again, depending on the type of pump that you get, if you get something as strong as like, let's say for example, 800 or 900 gallons per hour, and that you're powering more drawers that's up on the filtration system, because right now this is a six drawer. If you have like an 18 drawer or a 12 drawer, you might need a way stronger pump. I would look into things like uh, water pump barriers. They sell little bags that you can uh, kind of wrap your pump in so fish don't get stuck, like what happened to the ranchu. It's just like a little black bag people use for like ponds and all that stuff so uh, leaf litter don't get stuck and clog up these holes. So yeah, the performance of the filtration system will really depend on the type of pump that you get for it. This um, whole rack thing doesn't come with the water pump. It's up to you to choose the water pump and then you would have to accommodate a hose for it because the one that comes with it just sucks. So that's pretty much it for today's video. It does suck that I lost my black ranchu, but Ultimately, I tried to get this trickle filter to accommodate for my black ranch to not get stuck behind things. Um, little that I know, this is the reason why the black ranch ends up dying. Uh, it sucks, but hey, we ended up getting a nice filter out of this whole project. I know some of you guys asked for a goldfish update. I'll go ahead and do a dedicated goldfish video later on, but because of what happened to the ranch I have to give you guys this update during this video. That way everyone kind of stays on the same page. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And peace guys.